Yeah, that's right, H Town. We want to dedicate this to the memory of George and Barbara Bush and to Bob McNair. This is for the Houston Sports Hall of Famers. Let's celebrate the sports legacy of H Town. Cause for decades we've been holding the state down. It's a tradition like the livestock rodeo. And I'm about to break it down so you and your homies know. To take it back to the 40s for the proof. Wasn't hard to tell that Bates and Harriers was the truth. Been on to the 50s with my boy Jackie Burke. Won his first golf tournament, putting in work. Let's take it up to the 60s, Jimmy Wynn was killing it. A.J. Foyt's first indie, he was feeling it. 1970s man, lo and behold, Earl Campbell UT, after Foreman won his goal. The 1980s had Carl Lewis and Nolan Ryan, not to mention Andre Ware winning the Heisman. The 1990s saw Hakeem the Dream win, and Bagwell and Biggio brought the three Bs in. The 2000s was the Yao Ming era, and Andre Johnson, the best wide receiver ever. 2010, the Astros win, Simone Biles, J.J. Watt, and James Harden in Houston, we keep. Put your H's up. You can't forget the Dynamo win the dash. Houston, we can't. Pastorini, what's up? Yo, building the sports dynasty that's gonna last. This is H-Town, 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 H-Town. Welcome to the Houston Sports Awards 2019. From the Hilton Americas in downtown Houston, it's a 2019 second annual Houston Sports Awards presented by Insperity. Welcome in everyone to the second annual Houston Sports Awards presented by Insperity. I'm Julia Morales and for the next 60 minutes, we're gonna bring you the highlights of what has become the city's marquee event. We're gonna honor the best of 2018 and induct four new members to the Houston Sports Hall of Fame. Sit tight, we all know how incredible this city is and all the things we're celebrating. So let's get it started with the 2018 Event of the Year. Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. University of Houston's Fertitta Center Grand Opening. Houston Texans win over Tennessee after the passing of team owner Bob McNair. NBA Western Conference Finals, Rockets versus Warriors. So um, go ahead and bring that trophy out because I don't even don't need to do this. I mean. With all due respect to the other nominees, I mean, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is not just a sporting event. Sure, it's rodeo, but it's concerts, it's barbecue, it's half a billion dollars to Texas youth and education. So I don't think we, uh, you know, those, those other events are very, you know, heavy events or moments in time, but I just think we should get the trophy and leave. I agree. Is that Hold, right, hold on right there, partner. That's not the way this deal works. Bring that envelope. <laughs> All right. The winner of the event of the year is... Mm -hmm. Boy, are you a little nervous? Yes. <laughs> you NBA get Western control. Conference Finals. Congratulations. <laughs> Simone Biles wins the World Championship, her fourth all-around title. Beyond Ray Hopkins, spin catch to set up the winning field goal against the Dallas Cowboys. Houston Dunlo wins its first U.S. Open Cup championship. North Shore High School, last second half married to win the state championship against Duncanville. And the winner is North Shore State Championship, Hail Mary. The first Houston Sports Hall of Fame inductee of the night was none other than golfing legend Jackie Burke. The winner of the 1956 Masters and PGA Championship has impacted several generations of golfers, including so many in the Houston area. <laughs> All right.
You got it? Are you going to have something to say? No. I, need, I need you. You know, this is just like taking a lesson from Jackie. <laughs> Uh, I don't have to tell you what a exciting evening it is. Just getting from North Houston into Houston is a... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was telling the Marine Corps. Uh, we have a, the game is about rules. All games are about rules. The, the fellows that I'm going into the, to the uh, Hall of Fame with, all of them do it, are involved in rules. <clears throat> it's amazing the USGA has 34 rules. God only put 10 down here. <laughs> if, if we could adhere to those, the jails would be empty. <laughs> the Houston Sports Awards presented by Insperity is sponsored by Memorial Herman, Mercedes-Benz dealers of Greater Houston, and by Insperity, HR that makes a difference. Rival. Not anymore. I'm. I'm. That was many, many years ago. I'm. I'm just a civilian. No, you're much more than that as you show up in your Hall of Fame jacket. But what does this night mean to you as you watch Dave, Dan Pastorini, and some of these other Oilers get honored? Oh, it's it's an outstanding uh, evening. You know, uh, you know when we competed against one another years and years ago. You know, you see how guys compete, and you have you grow respect for them. And that respect is uh, enduring. It lasts for a long, long time. And as we are going into our, what do you want to say, a twilight? <laughs> I don't want to say twilight years. But the good years, the good years uh, it just gets better and better. And uh, I, I've been knowing Curly for a long time, Kenny Houston, Double Alt, that's Double Zero, uh, Mr. Johnson, White Shoes. You know, and I enjoyed watching these guys and, and competing against them, so it's, it's a joy to be here. Whenever Till and I were sitting on the porch of his ranch or when I was kicking his butt on the tennis court, don't say anything to him, he's really slow, terrible backhand. He'd talk about his dreams. He was telling me, you know, I'm going to own hotels and restaurants and casinos around the world, and one day I'm going to own the Houston Rockets. So I thought, how much more fitting could it be tonight than to have one of the greatest rockets, the greatest rocket of all time, Tillman's friend introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Akeem the Dream Elijahwan. It's my honor to present the Executive Year Award to my good friend, Tillman Petiva. Akeem, that's it? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to talk that I've sold a few hamburgers too on a grill or anything? But, uh, you know, the one person, it, 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 it's... I'm very fortunate to be here because when I sit here and I watch Jackie Burke and I watch Dan Pastorini and I watch George and I watch AJ Foyt and that's when I was like in junior high school and th these were just the guys that being a Houstonian you looked up to so very very much and I'm up here tonight twice and I truly have done nothing whatsoever and I do not belong up here and uh, but I thank the Houston Sports Authority and the Houston for Sports Award for it it's 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 a great honor to just contribute to your city and and i'm the luckiest guy because i got to watch elvin hayes in, in in the 1968 game and then watch him go to the san diego rockets and we didn't have a basketball team in houston and i'm in seventh grade and the rockets the san diego rockets are moving to houston that rockets deal was just a coincidence that this is where nasa is and they moved to town, and I became a Rocket fan. And uh, for many, many years, my family has gone to so many, many games. And you'd be surprised, very few people get to own a sports team in their hometown. Most teams are owned by people out of town. 
and, and I feel so fortunate to be able to do it. Uh, and I can remember a, a couple of weeks before we thought we had the deal, and I sat down with my family and I said, can y'all think of any better place to spend $2 billion? What else would you rather spend money on than that? And uh, I can tell you it was a family vote and uh, it was unanimous over and over. We couldn't think of anything else to do with $2 billion. So, but but uh, once again, I, I, I love Houston. I love giving back to Houston. Uh, what an honor it is to be up here with all the great athletes and people that have done so much because I've done so little. Tom, thank you for your friendship. Hakeem, thank you for the two great world championships that you brought us as I was sitting there with Charlie. Thank you all very much, everybody in Houston. After coming out of the shock of the tragedy of what happened at our school in Santa Fe, we were deeply touched by the outpouring of support from the Houston community. Nowhere was the support greater than that extended to us by the sports teams and their athletes here in Houston. And no athlete did more or jumped into action faster than Houston's own J.J. Watt, immediately paying for the funerals of our friends. We were floored. On the heels of having just dispersed all the funds he had raised for those affected from Hurricane Harvey last year, he stepped up once again to help in our time of need with our school's tragedy. Not only does JJ step up when there is an incident or immediate need, he has a track record of always giving back. Like the over $3 million he has raised through benefiting after school programs in 28 states with his marquee annual charity softball game. For this and many other reasons and occasions, that is why JJ Watt, for the second consecutive year, is the 2019 Sportsmanship Award recipient. Sadly, JJ couldn't be with us tonight, but he did send along a video message for his acceptance. First of all, I want to say thank you. I wish I could be there tonight, um, but I'm truly humbled and honored to receive this award. Um, growing up, my parents always taught me to give back. We weren't rich, but we weren't poor. Uh, and they taught me that we were fortunate to have what we had. And so every chance I got, they had me out in the community trying to do what we could to help others. Um, and that just kind of carried over into my life in college and then in the NFL. So I was fortunate to have people who led the way for me. And Annabelle, Caitlin, and Madison, it's so inspiring for me to see you guys leading the way for others at such a young age. Um, so while I feel honored to be receiving this award tonight, I don't feel that it's right for me to receive it as I was just doing what I feel like so many others would do if they were in my position. So what I want to do tonight is to give this award back to you because I believe that you guys truly deserve this award and you guys embody what this is all about. It's about giving back to the community. It's about helping those in need. It's about trying to raise awareness and inspire others to go out there and help their communities. So I'm inspired by you, and I'm sure everybody in this room tonight is inspired by you as well. So I encourage everybody to go check out Hearts United for Kindness, to check out what these girls are doing, and to support your local communities, to support kids in their local communities trying to do good. Because in my opinion, if we can inspire that next generation to do good and to help others, that's only gonna to continue to trickle down. And we're gonna have a generation of incredible human beings who not only look out for each other, but also try and inspire the next generation. So thank you guys for the award. Congratulations to you three. You've earned it, you deserve it. I'm unbelievably proud and inspired by you, and I wish you absolutely nothing but the best. Thank you guys. How about that J.J. Watt, huh? How about these girls? You girls came here thinking you were presenting the award and you're accepting it. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? We just want to thank everybody so much for the support that we were given after Santa Fe. And, you know, 
through that tragedy was something that we never thought that we would have to go through. And it really made us realize that we don't get to choose what happens to us. We don't get to choose what other people do to us, but we can only choose how we react to it. And so rather than getting mad and upset because we can't change the situation and no anger or sadness changes the situation, but happiness does and kindness does. And so just reaching out to our peers and our community, making sure that everybody's okay and just helping each other for the future, that's what we wanna do. And so we're so, so thankful for all of y'all who have given us support and have just given us the privilege to be here today. On the blue carpet presented by Mercedes-Benz. What a special night we have at the Houston Sports Awards presented by Insperity. And that's where yeah. Steve Arisby comes in, Chief Operating Officer. Why did Insperity want to get involved with the Houston Sports Award? Well, gosh, it, it, you're right. This is a great event tonight. Um, you know, I think, I, I think back to the fact that, you know, you are who you associate with. And tonight we're associated with the best. I mean, we're talking about the best uh, athletes and, and contributors in our community uh, here in Houston, Texas. You have done more for car racing. I'm going to tell you my age. The first time I saw you race was at Playland Park. And that was, were you there? All right. And uh, then, of course, when you won, I was in high school when you won in 61. We were so proud of you, a guy from the Heights winning the Indy 500. So. We're just so proud to have a hey, Houstonian. What the hell are you telling me, I'm old? Yes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what is your biggest thrill, just remaining in Houston with your dad and, and uh, making these fabulous cars and winning these races? Well, I think the biggest thrill I had here was after 61, I won the first 500. A lady came to my daddy's shop and said, well, you won't see A.J. Floyd here no more. My daddy's name was Tony. He sees it over under the hood of a car working. The lady walked down there. I can't believe you're here. I said, why? I said, my daddy needed help. So he's helped me. And uh, that's how I was brought up, working. And I'm still working. But, uh, you know, the thing, the thing I think about so much with you and with Jackie Burke is the fact that the equipment kept getting bigger and better and stronger and then the engine and safer <laughs> and the engine went from the front to the back and no matter what you were driving you won. Yeah, you know, in racing is like anything, if you work hard at anything you can win. And that's why I was raised and I still believe that. If you work hard you can be a winner. And you can't lay on your butt and win. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to thank you for all of us for all of the enjoyment you've given us down through the years, AJ, and I'm just so glad that you could get into the Hall of Fame because it's good to be recognized by your city. Huh? Well, it's great. You know, I was born right over at St. Joe's Hospital, yeah. raised out in the Heights, and uh, I'm just glad I could bring a championship to the Hall of Fame here. And uh, what else can I say? Uh, I'm too damn old to go back. I'd like to with the new cars, <laughs> but... I can't kid myself, and I've been broken up a couple times. You see, I can't even walk up a damn step. That's a shame, but I can't. I can go down them on my head, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Coming up them, it's pretty damn hard. But uh, all in all, I wasn't supposed to live to be but 22 years old. I just turned 84, and that's pretty damn old. So, <laughs> uh, what else can I say? I had a wonderful life. Won a few races, had a lot of fun, a lot of pretty trophy girls. So what else can you ask for? <laughs> well, we had a wreath of carnations for you uh, here tonight, but uh, we couldn't find the milk oh, okay. uh, for the victory lap here today. But thank you so much, A.J. Foyt, for everything you've done. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. Uh, here, here's, here's the wreath, A.J. You want to put it around his neck? <laughs> AJ, 
You got the wreath and I'm gonna stand over here. <laughs> Thank you so much, AJ. Uh, Tony was gonna, uh, they were gonna bring you the uh, milk, but we don't have any milk for you to drink. Oh, are you here? They told me you didn't have any. All right, you gotta take a drink. We're on the last lap. <laughs> you didn't care back then either, did you? Huh? Thank you, A.J. Foyt, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, Houston has some of the best professional athletes, but there's also a plethora of athletes who will put it all on the line for the love of the game. The Houston Sports Awards presented by Insperity has three categories honoring these individuals. Caitlin Banish, Cy Ranks three sports star, wrestling, volleyball, and track and field. Keyshawn Carter, the Woodlands High School State Champion track star and All-State football running back. Grant Cannell, quarterback from St. Pius X and last year's Houston Sports Awards winner. Kate Reese, Cy Woods two sports star, volleyball and basketball. The 2019 Houston Sports Award High School Athlete of the Year, Carl, is you know, next year, think about Dakin Jr. since I'm a college coach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keyson Carter. Rob Gray, University of Houston point guard. De'Ara King, University of Houston quarterback. Ed Oliver. University of Houston defensive tackle and last year's Houston Sports Awards winner. Travion Williams, Texas A&M running back. And the Houston Sports Award for College Athlete of the Year goes to... Let's see here. Let me get this baby open. You have the hand-eye coordination. Yes. College, of the, College Athlete of the Year is Derek King, University of Houston. Texan superfan Joe Texan Banowski. Chloe Beaver, eight year old Astros fan whose story went viral. Debbie, the Texan Brandon. Valentin Haloma, diehard Astros fan since 1965. Houston Mall, all sports super fan. Armando Oseguera, the number one Texans fan in Mexico. Grace Perez, who's been dubbed the last loyal Astros fan. Those are certainly seven Houston diehard fans, but only one of them can be honored as the Houston Sports Awards 2018 Fan of the Year. And the winner of that award is the late, great Joe Texan Banowski. George, now you see why they had to put a partner with him all these years. Uh, put that big jacket on. Hall of Fame uh, jacket from Knott's Standard. Hall of Fame ring from Fred Cuellar Diamond Cutters International. And Fred, I'll show you the ring you're getting. And Calvin, that's a, that's a heavy trophy, isn't it? There's the ring. George, before you, um, we interview you, I did 10 years of basketball with Calvin Murphy, as you well know. And uh, all during the 10 years, he kept talking about his fighting exploits, <laughs> how he used to pick on bigger guys and knock them out and everything. Would you do me a favor? Would you just knock the sh out of this guy? I still would like to, but Kevin Murphy would jump back on my neck and beat me back up, beat me up. I'd rather fight a gorilla with a switch than fight George Foreman. George, what's it mean to you getting in the Hall of Fame? 
This is extra special for me because raised up in Houston, Texas, all I ever wanted to do, I started boxing so I could come back and beat up everybody on the street. <laughs> I got a Golden Glove trophy. I said, as soon as I get this, they're going to know it. They didn't put it in the paper in Houston. Then I got an Olympic gold medal. I said, I even called the forward times, put this in the paper. Maybe I can scare them. Next thing you know, I'm a heavyweight champ of the world two times, but it was all for Houston. It was all for Houston. <laughs> you, uh, you remember Down Goes Frazier, huh? Yeah, and I that was, was uh, that was one of your greatest. I fights. kept hearing uh, they were saying Down Goes Frazier, and I was praying, please don't get up, Frazier. <laughs> Six times I knocked him down. Six times he got up. <laughs> well, and then there was the rumble. In the jungle. No, we don't talk about that. No, we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> who did? Uh, I can't even forget who Ali fought in that fight. You said the name anyway. Oh, <laughs> well, you told me how much admiration you had for. Now I love him, but I didn't love him that night in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I hit him in the side, boom, and I thought I had him. He leaned on me and said, "That all you got, George?" <laughs> it was like a horror movie. That was all I had. <laughs> well, you know, all of the great, all of the great exploits in boxing, all of the great fights you had. A lot of these people in here remember you more for a little skillet that makes a hamburger. <laughs> well, he took my jacket. It's the lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine. <laughs> it knocks out the fat. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to tell it. I don't want to tell it because it's just rumor that when you sold that little hamburger skillet, you made more money, three times more money than you did in all your fights. Yeah, I made a lot of money. But look, I have <laughs> there are no IRS five people. Five sons named George, five daughters, Georgetta. <laughs> you put marry them out the front door and they come back in the back door <laughs> with more Georgias. <laughs> All that money is gone in case someone need a loan. <laughs> what was your, what's your greatest thrill of all time? All your fights? All you know, the greatest thrill as an athlete, I won an Olympic gold medal, 1968. And I think so many Americans were proud too when you took the flag and went around the, the ring and waving that flag. Was that your idea? Yes, yeah, small American flag. In the Olympic Village, you forget that you look different because you walk up to a guy, he looks just like you. And you say, hey, man, he said, another language. <laughs> I said, how are they going to know where I'm from when I win this thing? So in my pocket, I had an Olympic, uh, I mean, a small American flag, and I bowed. Got you this time, got you. And I waved it just so everyone would know where I was from. <laughs> George Foreman, and let me, let me speak for everybody how proud we are that you're a Houstonian and how proud we are of what you do for our community because a lot of people don't understand what all you've done as a humanitarian for Houston. Well, and I'm proud to be here and with Calvin Murphy and Bill, this makes us so special. Two of the greatest guys in Houston. I love them both. We love you, George. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in history, we have all living past mayors on the same stage, in the same room, at the same time, spanning five decades. And, and now it is my pleasure to welcome to the stage as we honor his parents with tonight's Lifetime Achievement Award, the son of President George H.W. and Barbara Bush, Neil Bush, an outstanding Houston citizen. Neil. My dad believed that service is a noble calling. And if he were here tonight, 
He would have sung the praises of Mayor Turner and all the mayors that were present here for getting their uniforms dirty, for, for pitching in and making a difference in this community. And apropos of tonight's gala, my father would have sung the praises of the mayors who have made Houston the best sports city in America. I grew up in Houston, so uh, it's good to be here. Wrote this song about the moment before your head hits the pillow. I pray for all the things I need. Faith and strength and to believe. God in all that I don't know. I pray I don't die alone. When all the faith inside of me is crashing down and makes me bleed. Take the weight up off my chest Hold me close against your breast In a world of hurt You're always there You're the final word Of my desperate prayer You're my Feel your breath and I can breathe. Look in your eyes and I can see. I touch you and I take you in. I kiss you and I'm born again. In a world of hurt, always there. Of my desperate prayer, you're my amen, amen, you're my desperate prayer you're my amen you're my amen you're my amen evening to everyone gathered at the Houston Sports Awards on behalf of the Bush family thank you for honoring mom and dad Barbara and George H.W. Bush were proud Houstonians and they would have enjoyed being with you all tonight. They were never professional athletes, but they sure loved Houston sports teams. I know they admired many of you who are in the room, and you are kind to remember them with the Lifetime Achievement Award. Laura and I are sorry we can't be with you tonight, but we send our best wishes for a wonderful event. Please welcome some of my nieces and nephews, Marshall, Lizzie, and Pierce, to accept this award for their Ganny and Gampy. May God bless you all. Um, I don't think I can add anything that my dad or my uncle didn't say, but on behalf of my cousin Marshall and my sister Lizzie, um, you know, I'll just say this. My grandparents loved sports for the same reasons they loved Houston. 
Because Houston, just like sports, uh, is a city that celebrates diversity, that takes all kinds of different talents to make a great team. And if you try hard and you follow the rules to the point earlier, you're given a fair shot in this great city. And that's why, uh, you know, a Connecticut Yankee born guy ended his life being buried at one of the great universities, the Texas A&M. You always get an applause if you say Texas A&M, I realize. I, I went to UT, unfortunately UT fans are, all right, here we got some in there. Uh, but really, but really, Houston um, loved my grandparents, and my grandparents loved this great city. So thank you so much for this honor. It really means a lot to us. On the Mercedes-Benz blue carpet with Alex Bregman, up for Athlete of the Year. Have you looked at that category to see who you're up against? No, but I probably don't have a chance. <laughs> Stop it, Mr. Breakout MVP candidate this year. What a year for you. As you look back, how do you put into words what you did in 2018? Yeah, well, I had some great coaches, some great teammates playing for the best organization in baseball and just had a blast. And uh, it didn't end the way we wanted to like it did in 2017, but we're leaving for spring training in two days to hopefully uh, give it another shot and go win another one. Simone Biles, Olympic gold medalist. Alex Bregman, Houston Astros. James Harden, Houston Rockets. DeAndre Hopkins, Houston, Texans. And the winner is Simone Biles. Pretty heavy. <laughs> thank you guys. This is a huge honor and a blessing. And I just want to thank the Houston Sports Authority. And I also want to congratulate all the other nominees for this. So thank you guys. Mike D'Antoni, Houston Rockets. AJ Hinch, Houston Astros. Bill O'Brien, Houston Texans. Calvin Sampson, University of Houston Basketball. And this year, Coach of the Year is... One second. Mike D'Antoni. Good evening, everyone. I sure wish I was there in Houston instead of in Sacramento getting ready to play a game. But uh, I want to thank the Houston Sports Authority for this award. Houston is blessed with so many good coaches and such good, uh, good teams that uh, it's an honor to be recognized. Um, and above all, the players 
They, uh, they're a great group to work with and everything that we're able to achieve comes through them. Front office, the ownerships have been magnificent. And lastly, but not least, my wife who's stuck with me in a lot of years. So thank you again and have a great night. Houston Sports Awards presented by Insperity is sponsored by Memorial Hermann, Mercedes-Benz dealers of Greater Houston, and by Insperity, HR that makes a difference. Welcome back to the second annual Houston Sports Awards presented by Insperity. While it was an emotional night with the honoring of the students from Santa Fe High School as well as President George and Barbara Bush, there were many other remarkable moments as well. The highlight came at the end with the Houston Sports Hall of Fame induction of Dan Pastorini and the honoring of the Love You Blue Oilers. First of all, I want to thank the Houston Sports Hall of Fame for selecting me. But I'm going to accept this award, not for me, but for the Love You Blue players that are here in force tonight, the Love You Blue fans. <laughs> the city of Houston and how you supported us through those times. I came here in 1971. We went 4-9-1, 1-13, and 1-13. And and I was kind of questioning my career choice. And we were in the toughest division. The AFC Central was the toughest division with Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, us, and Cleveland. And those were four really tough teams, especially from the mid-70s on. The Steelers were always the team to beat. And in 1979, when we lost to them up there, that was a heartbreaker. You know, we, we thought we kind of got a bad call. Everybody saw the, the touchdown and everything else. Now, I don't know if we'd have won, but we'd have tied the score late in the third quarter, and I liked our chances because we had one hell of a defense. We had a defense that could match the Pittsburgh Steelers. As long as we didn't give them bad field position, we could take advantage and take our shots and possibly win that game. But when you had to play catch up against the Pittsburgh Steelers steel curtain, forget it. The odds are against you. And I'll tell you, we saw that film there and off, walking off the field, you saw me and Joe Green, and Joe Green's I love you like a brother. You're a warrior. We had great games against you. And your team, we brought out the best of each other. I remember one year we played, and the next day there were 23 guys on the injured list. We had a good coach. We had a good coach that brought this city together and brought a team together that's like family. And these guys, for the last nine years, have come in from my tournament to support a charity and help raise over a million dollars doing that. <clears throat> I'm blessed to have them as friends. This award is us. It's not me, it's us. And I want to thank the Insperity people who have supported my charities for years, who I work with on a regular basis, They've sponsored this deal. They're the first people to step up and, and help. And I just, I want to thank Jay and Paul and Steve and everybody. There's one person I got to thank who straightened my life out some 10 years ago. And uh, I had a problem. I didn't have a problem drinking. I just had a lot of problems when I drank. So it'll be nine years this April 26th, but my girlfriend, Pam Morse, gave me an ultimatum. But the biggest thing she did and helped me do was to get back and reunited with my daughter, Bronna Marie. So, so anyway, thank you all. God bless y'all. Congratulations to my fellow recipients. I'm honored to be amongst you. Love you, Blue. I love you guys. You know that. God bless y'all. Look at that football. Here we come. Houston Oilers, number one. Houston has the Oilers, the greatest football team. We move the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. We're in the air, we're on the ground, always in control. And when you 
talking older, we're talking Super Bowl, cause we're the Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers number one, Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers, Houston Oilers number one. Hey, how about ending the evening on that one? It's been another epic year here at the Houston Sports Awards, presented by Insperity and produced by the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we look forward to another great program next year. Thank you so much, Houston.